Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between a Dutch oven and a camp oven. And we're going to go into the details of where the name come from as well. And we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. I just want to say the purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I appreciate it so very much. So let's get on into the video. Now there is a huge difference in opinions when it comes to Dutch oven versus camp oven. I've had many people say, especially whenever I show a Dutch oven, in a video, they say, that's not a Dutch oven. It doesn't have legs. Well, it doesn't have legs. Now, this one's got a heat ring, but it does not have legs. And this is what they're referring to as Dutch oven. There's the legs. But uh, before we get deep into the Dutch oven versus camp oven uh, nomenclature or the naming of the Dutch oven versus the camp oven, uh, let's take a little bit of history. Now I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. Hopefully I'll follow this up with some pictures while I'm reading so you don't see me standing here, you know, trying to squint and see my paper. I put a couple of paragraphs together kind of explaining how this kind of got started. So here we go. The Han Dynasty in China was the second imperial dynasty of China that spanned from 2006 BC until 220 AD. During that time, the process of producing cast iron was perfected. Furnaces that were able to produce pig iron and in turn cast iron were in operation during that era by the Han Dynasty. Tools, weapons, utility items became widespread including simple forms of cookware. In the process of time, casting techniques became widespread and eventually made its way to the Netherlands somewhere around the 1600s. It is there where molds that were formed with dry sand made it possible for the Dutch to produce a very high quality cast iron pot. The popularity of these cast iron pots along with the casting techniques helped to solidify the term Dutch oven. In 1707, Adam Darby patented the sand casting method and named it the Dutch oven. From that point, cooking in cast iron pots became increasingly more popular. Technically, the Dutch oven was neither one of these, the one with the legs or without the legs. The Dutch oven was actually the furnace that was used to produce the cast iron to begin with. Now, because of the invention of the Franklin stove, people started using cast iron cookware, not just in the fireplace, but also on the pot belly stove and then later on, wood stoves that was designed for cooking on, not just for heating your home. At that point, it became necessary to have pieces of cast iron that did not have legs. It just made it easier to cook on a flat surface with a piece of cast iron that was flat on the bottom. So that kind of played into it just a little bit. Hopefully we'll get on that subject a little deeper in the future, but we just want to skim the tops today. What I refer to as the Dutch oven. Now this one is a lodge. You can tell by the knuckle busters in the lid, or what they're actually called, are drip basters. That's where the steam will kind of collect and then drip back on your food. And this one has a rounded top. Some are higher dome than others. This is not a high dome. And this one here has a heat ring. It's a little older. The older pieces will have heat rings. Like this guy right here will have a flat bottom. Now this here is a Birmingham stove and range number eight and this is a red mountain top in a century bottom but we have the random dimples on a red mountain which lets you know it's red mountain and if it was more uniform it would be a century series. The bottom here has the descriptive made in the USA and the descriptive size right here number eight and it has 10, I think, and an eighth inch. That lets you know if it was century. Now, if it was Red Mountain, it would just have an eight 
maybe a letter or two beside it. Okay, now getting back to our subject. Now right here is what I refer to is a camp oven. And most people call it a camp oven as well. And this is a number 12. This is a lodge. You ask me how I know this is a lodge right across the top. <laughs> but uh, this one has a rim around the top where you can set coals on the top so you're not just cooking from heat coming up through the bottom. Now with the regular Dutch oven, there was a time you would hang it in the fireplace or hang it over a tripod over a fire and all your heat is coming from the bottom. You don't have any downward heat, mostly the sides if it's a big fire, but you don't have any heat coming from the top down except for the heat where the cast iron itself just gets hot and there's some radiant heat there. But with the camp oven, you can put coals on the top and you can brown your food. This comes in great when it comes to making biscuits. But you put coals on the top and this is designed for the coals on the top. And you can either put charcoal bricks or even dump your wood coals on top. Either one works fine. Now this here has got legs so it can sit in the fire itself and still be raised up above the fire. Traditionally, the camp oven will be used in a campfire. The Dutch oven will be used in a modern oven. You can use this on a campfire. You'll either have to hang it above the campfire or make you a little stand to set yours on top of the campfire, but not right down on it. So we have the, the camp oven and the Dutch oven. Easier for everyone in general just to kind of make the distinction camp oven and Dutch oven. Now this is what I like about it. If you're the type of person that loves cooking outdoors but can't always go outdoors, you can try out all those sweet recipes in a Dutch oven. And anything that will work in a Dutch oven, as far as cook time and ingredients or whatever, you can practice these things at home before you ever go camping. And then you can bring out the camp oven and say, I've tested it, now let's go outside and give it a try. The camp oven and the Dutch oven are both great pieces of cast iron to have. I think if you are a cast iron enthusiast, you need at least one of each. And honestly, if you have one, chances are you're going to get another. And maybe even another. I know I'm probably going to get all kinds of comments saying, no, that's not a camp oven. No, that's not a Dutch oven. But generally, that is the terminology. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. You can also check out Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. It's really growing. It's full of people who love cast iron, love sharing and connecting. And check out our website, cicookware.com. We're currently working on changing the name of the website to easybeasy.com. And even if you type in cicookware.com, it should redirect you to easybeasy once we get it up and running. I will leave a link to all of these sites below in the video description. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.